We'll go through an example where we're using Gauss's law to calculate the gravitation field of a mass distribution. So, just recap that Gauss's law for gravity. Uh, we're using this as an introductory example. We're going to use uh, Gauss's law for electric fields and magnetic fields in this semester here. It states that we take a closed surface and we integrate the flux or the field passing through the area, the surface area of that closed surface. So remember that circle just means that we are integrating over a closed surface. There's no difference in how we do an integration. It just has to be a closed surface. Is equal to a negative 4 pi, some constant which you call the gravitational constant gravity, times the mass that is enclosed inside this closed surface. Okay, so that is Gauss's law for gravity. So in this example here, I'm going to look at a, uh, a line mass. So imagine we take a, it could be a long rope. Or it could be some odd object out in the universe. Who knows? Let's say it's a long rope. And we want to know what is the gravitational field of that rope. That might be a weird question, but we can ask a lot of weird questions in physics. So we're going to use Gauss law for that. But in order to do that, we need to know some sort, some sort of a the configuration or the shape of the field. So let's uh, say we're considering like a small mass element here. Let's say we can look at it as being a sphere. Let's say the rope is just a string of a bunch of atoms, for example, a bunch of molecules. We're going to say we have a little round object right here, and then right next to it is a little another one. I'm going to separate them with a distance between here. They don't have, they have a distance between them per se, but that's for clarification purposes. If we were to draw the field, we know this mass here would have some field pointing to it. I'm drawing it as a plane, but think about it as being three-dimensional objects, right? So we can definitely say that the field uh, of this sphere, a little object here, is pointing towards it from all directions. Similarly, we can say the same thing of this neighboring object. Think about these as being identical mass elements. So just take this rope, break it up to a bunch of tiny little segments. Each little segment will have exactly the same shape. Now it should be evident that these two, for example, will have, since they're the same mass elements, similar mass elements, It'll be the same magnitude but opposite directions. Though so they add up to zero. Similarly, these two contributions of the fields will also have opposite directions, same magnitude. So they also add up to zero. These two here, on the other hand, will add together. So if I were to draw my little mass down here, I'm saying I'm looking at two elements that are just really close together right here. We say that these two pointing down here. Same strength, same direction, they will add up to a net field that is directed down. So this is the gravitational field of these two, right? Okay. Similar, these two are going to add up together to a field pointing towards the mass elements. What about, let's take uh, these two here, for example. So I'm gonna say this is the same length here. Looking from a geometrical point of view, if you look at a component is perpendicular down to the mass elements and one that is horizontal. So this part here points down, this one points towards the mass element. Similar over here, this one points down, this one points towards the mass element. Now we can use the same argument and those two add out to zero and again only the uh, components that is down towards the mass element are contributing. So all in all, all components of the gravitation field that's aligned with the mass elements of this rope, or oh, long, thin mass element, will cancel it up to zero. So all in all, in summary, the field is everywhere perpendicular to 
to that object. Now the endpoints are going to be a lot more complicated. So just imagine this is extending far out. But far out, how far do we mean? That's a little bit more arbitrary. All right. So based on this geometry here, now we know the geometry of the field. We want to know what is the field right here, for example. So we don't have to imagine these ends go far away. We're going to say then the end effects does not influence the field in this neighborhood. We have to use Gauss's law to find that, or we can use Gauss's law for it. And we're going to take this Gaussian surface, because it's a surface integral. A long line, long mass element, will have a cylindrical geometry. So I can take a cylinder. If I were to put a cylinder around this, so this cylinder simply encompasses a segment of this a uh, long line. All right, now we can do the, uh, the integral. It's the closed surface. It's the uh, gravitational field dotted with that area element. So that's the surface element. We're looking at a small surface area element on this uh, cylinder equal to this, these constants. Okay. Let's say that this object has a total mass m. We can also say it has a length l. All right. Then the question is then, um, how much mass is enclosed? If we let this cylinder encompass all of it, um, then it will be all mass. We can also say that. Um, we're looking at the mass density. So the mass density is the mass divided by the length. Okay. Uh, so that's another way of, of expressing that. But otherwise, we can just say this cylinder extends infinitely far out, for example, to a very, very long distance, and all the mass is encompasses inside this. So this is just the total mass. All right. Actually, better. Let's write in terms of density. Let's say this one does not necessarily extend, or we could say it extends to infinity, for example. How much mass do we have in? I think mass and infinity doesn't work well, but we can then express this in terms of the mass density. So the mass encapsulated is going to be the uh, mass density times whatever length this, this cylinder has. Okay. And then we say, well, that length could be inf infinite for now. Yeah, let's just leave out that. All right, now we look at the field passing through the surface here. Well, first of all, the surface at the endpoints, there's no field passing through. So the flux through the end, end surfaces are zero. It's only around the side that the field is passing through. But since this Gaussian surface is surrounding this uh, uh, line, let's so say here's the line, here's the Gaussian surface. This is some distance r. At any point along the surface has the same distance to that line of mass. That also means that no matter where we are on that surface, the gravitational field is the same. So here's the gravitational field passing through here. So this is kind of like the end view of it. Here's the gravitational field. Remember we talked about that normal, that is that vector pointing away from the surface. Of course, these are different vectors, different directions. Okay. So if we write this in terms of the dot product, in terms of magnitudes, we can put in a cosine angle, the area element. And we have the mass expressed in terms of the mass density and the length of that cylinder. So it's actually the cylinder that has a length L, not necessarily um, the line of mass. OK, so accelerated gravity on that surface is everywhere the same. So that's a constant. So if you could pull that outside, cosine of the angle, that's the angle between 
the gravitational field vector and the normal vector. And no matter where we are, they are opposite direct direction. So the angle is 180 degrees everywhere. So that means this is a negative one. Then we're integrating over the surface area. And, but it's only the side surface. So the area of the side surface, and we integrate over that, it's going to be the uh, 2 pi times the radius times the length of it. So it's going to give us the area of that side surface. That's equal to negative 4 pi, constant g, mass density, and the length l. And this is why we express the mass in terms of the mass density instead, because now we can strike out the, ma uh, the length of both sides. So it does not depend on how long it is. The only uh, thing we have to say is we have to be able to ignore the end effects. Okay. We also notice that we have a negative on both sides. We have a pi that divides out. We have a 2 divided by 4 divided by r. So this here means we can solve for the magnitude of the gravitational field. 2 divided by 4 divided by 2 gives us a 2. We have the uh, acceleration, acceleration gravity, the gravitational constant. We have the linear mass density, and then dividing by r. That gives us the magnitude of this gravitational field as we move away from that line mass. So this is a uh, example how to apply Gauss's law when we know something about the geometry uh, of the uh, object of interest and it's usually only when we have some uh, well-defined some say easy uh, geometries that we can actually apply uh, Gauss's law but conceptually it's very strong as well which we'll see in different examples